Hi and welcome back to another Computex video. We are now at the booth of MSI. I spotted some interesting graphics cards, especially when it comes to cooling solutions and also one very obscure SSD that I want to feature in this video. This video is powered by Sisonic's Prime TX 1600 Watt Premium PSU. With a peak efficiency of 94% at 50% load, this PSU is 80 plus titanium and cybernetics titanium certified. I've been using Sisonic Prime PSUs myself for years in extreme overclocking scenarios and I was never disappointed. All necessary safety features are in place such as OPP, OVP, OCP and OTP and will make sure that your system is running as stable and safe as possible. I also find it impressive that Seasonic is so convinced of their own quality that these PSUs come with a warranty of 12 years. That is just impressive. So make sure to check out Seasonic's Prime TX 1600 watt PSU in the link below. Starting with this RTX 4070 Super 12G Gaming X Slim MLG. MLG is a Chinese translation and basically the Dragon Edition. And that's, as far as I can tell, the only real new graphics card inside this box. The other one look pretty familiar. Maybe I just missed something, otherwise you can let me know if you've already seen this card before. From what I've seen, you can take off the backplate. It is kind of magnetic and thus change the design of the graphics card. So yeah, it would have been interesting to maybe see the backside of the card instead of the front side. I'm also sure that you're familiar with these cards and also with this 4080 Super 16G Expert, which is very similar when it comes to design to the Founders Edition, has a fan on top to push in and also another fan underneath here to pull air through. And there is a special edition that is based on this card and that's why I was talking about this one first. And here we have the card that looks very similar but it's completely different when it comes to the internals. If we just move over here you can see again externals look very similar but if we move down here yeah, I will have to film from underneath otherwise the reflection from the glass is too hard. But that's basically an AIO cooled card, but in a closed system. So you have the radiator sitting on the side rather than having the radiator hanging off the card of the tubing. So just a very compact solution. Also reminds me of an Asus Matrix, I think, that was made a few, few years ago that already kind of used the same cooling concept. A similar card, but in the Chunk edition, is hanging in this PC. It's a four slot card, so it's really massive, but also has much bigger cooling surface, also much bigger radiator, what you can see over here. I hope you can see it at least a little bit. It's very difficult to film through the glass because of all the reflections. It's interesting though, this portion of the radiator is a little bit slimmer. This one is a little bit thicker, but they have different fin density. This area right here, quite dense fins. This one, wider fin density. And I was wondering, I asked MSI what's the reason for that, and I said, this is apparently better for dissipating the heat. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. It seems or sounds a bit odd because personally I always thought thinner fin density would always mean higher surface area and thus yeah, higher heat or higher amount of heat you can dissipate. Also here again, similar to the other card, we just have a pump sitting directly on the cold plate. Just a very tiny AIO in the end. As you might have noticed, everything is about AI here. AI is the big and yeah, annoying topic and I was like, oh god, MSI, AI generated edition, that sounds like another marketing thing, but if we go over here, it's actually pretty cool. So they used an AI generated image and turned it into a real graphics card shroud. So I have to give them that, that is something where you could call, yeah, it's truly AI generated. It's not going to be an available card for sale, but it looks definitely nice. M.2 SSDs and M.2 coolers has been a big thing on our channel so far. But I have to say that MSI with this one definitely made a good working product. At least if you have the space to place it somewhere on your motherboard and have sufficient airflow, this is a very well cooled SSD. Here next to it though, there is a different M.2 SSD and I would say it's maybe also a questionable yeah, cooling solution. Not quite sure what to think about it. It says non-metal vapor chamber SSD thermal solution. That's how it looks like on the screen. And here we have it. Uh, the working prototype. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm just filming it through a lens to magnify it. But there's some vapor bubbles coming from the copper part then going to the top right here. The concept how this SSD works is that you have this plastic body 
that is filled with a liquid that could very well be some type of a Novak fluid. At least it has a quite low boiling point. And as I said before, you have those bubbles going from the copper part right here where the heat source is and then goes up the way here and condenses on the metal part in the end, which is acting as the heatsink. And the concern I have is that the heatsink area is pretty small. Keep in mind, if this is a generation 5 NVMe drive, the heat in the end will be massive and you will not be able to dissipate all the heat just with that tiny metal part alone. And that means once you run into high load and the fluid starts to evaporate and evaporate, there will be a lot of pressure building up inside the case and it's a plastic case. So I'm not sure if this will be able to hold up. I would love to see this under high load and uh, yeah, I could see that this might even explode and leak because I'm not quite sure how this would be able to, to keep the liquid inside once the fluid starts to boil. And I'm pretty sure that this is not sufficient amount of surface area to dissipate a lot of heat from a Gen 5 SSD. So it's an interesting looking concept, but I'm pretty sure under load this would not work out. We just found the probably most obscure looking fans on the show, made by MSI. These are fans though that you cannot buy separately, at least from what they told me. This will not stop me from buying these fans that come with the case to also find out how they perform. So here we have the MPG Velox 300R Airflow PZ White. PZ because it's Project Zero compatible. It's one of the new Project Zero compatible cases that MSI is showing. And you can see one of those weird looking fans, 120 millimeter in the back right here. So it has two different yeah, fan blade geometries, one steeper in uh, the center and longer on the side. Very, very interesting. And a bigger version of that with RGB in the front. With these types of fans, you know, if it's just a case fan, it probably doesn't matter too much if it really changes airflow or not. Most of what a fan is doing happens in the outer portion of the blade. So the center probably doesn't really matter at all. I just hope it doesn't make performance worse. But whenever this will be out, I will get it and try. MSI also shows one of the new AIOs with another big screen. I listened to your feedback from the previous videos and I know you all love more screens inside your system. So we're also covering that, which has also one big fan, if you think about it, because this is one uniform body for the entire AIO with three rotors inside. Also quite cool that it only has this one single cable. So it should make installation quite nice, smooth, simple, and also very easy when it comes to the cable management. I also spotted a nice looking Project Zero build that interestingly doesn't even feature a Project Zero motherboard. Then I asked and I said, they also want to highlight that with a Project Zero case, you can obviously also use normal motherboards and do a normal build. This one, I think it looks pretty cool with the wooden handles on top and also wooden fans. Looks pretty elegant. We just spotted a 1600 watt PSU by MSI and I also noticed it is coming with dual 12 volt 2x6, so the new connector, which is cool. That should provide a ton of power if you're building like a workstation, rendering machine, maybe with dual 4090. There's also this interesting prototype. It's an M-Power overclocking board by MSI that features Mini CU DIMM. Mini CU DIMM is nothing you can buy. That is something that was done in cooperation with Intel. It's based on SO DIMM. And you might know that SO DIMM from the notebook segment is actually known for having a little bit higher signal integrity, signal quality than a normal dual inline module. And that's why they made this board to probably try to break some records. Just to also have this covered, MSI also shows this Project Zero Cam 2 board. We already featured Cam 2 enough, I think, from different videos, different vendors. So I just wanted to show this uh, also available as Project Zero or probably going to be available. And that's the end of our quick tour through the MSI booth. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye bye.